This is a plot of position x versus time t. Here is t equals 0. At t equals 0, the initial x value, x sub 0, is negative. Here the object is moving away from the origin. Here it has stopped for an instant. And now it is moving back toward the origin. Stops, moves away from the origin, stops, moves back toward the origin. The steepness of the hill is said to be the slope, which varies at each time t. A tangent line intersects the plot at a single point. The slope is uphill or positive at t equal t1, but downhill at t equal t2. This negative slope and velocity means that the object is moving back toward the origin. At each point, the slope m is calculated to be m equal rise over run. The rise in the vertical direction is delta x, and the run in the horizontal direction is delta t. On this position time plot, the slope at each point is also the velocity v equals delta x over delta t. Instead of a position time plot, now we have a velocity versus time plot. At each point, the slope m is calculated to be m equals rise over run. The rise in the vertical direction is delta v. The run in the horizontal direction is delta t. On this velocity time plot, the slope at each point is also the acceleration a equals delta v delta t. This positive slope means that the velocity is increasing. The slope is zero at t4, and this means that the velocity is not changing for a moment. In review, the slope on an xt plot is the velocity. The slope on a vt plot is the acceleration. Next, we'll make some plots of position, velocity, and acceleration for the case of having constant acceleration. When the constant acceleration is positive, then the plot of position versus time, x versus t, is given by some portion of a right side up parabola. The parabola is upside down when the constant acceleration is negative. The parabola is shifted vertically to match the given initial position, x sub zero which might be either positive or negative. Here x of 0 is positive. x of 0 is the value of x at t equals 0. The parabola is shifted downward when x 0 is negative. The parabola is shifted horizontally to match the given initial velocity v sub 0, which might be either positive or negative. The initial velocity occurs at t equals zero, and it is the slope at t equals zero. On the left, the initial slope is negative because v zero is negative. On the right, the initial slope is positive because v zero is positive. In the simplest example, the object is motionless. Its acceleration is zero, its velocity is zero, and the location is constant. Throughout time, the object is getting neither closer nor farther from the origin. In this example, the acceleration is still zero, but the velocity is constant. In this plot, that velocity is positive, but in this plot, that velocity is negative. This is a plot of position versus time. When the acceleration is zero, this is a plot of a straight line. We have x equals x zero plus v zero t. x zero is the initial location. In this plot, x zero is negative. And in this plot, x zero is negative. This looks like the equation y equals mx plus b. In this case, the slope is v zero which is the initial velocity, 
In this plot, the initial velocity is positive and this constant slope is positive or uphill. In this plot, the initial velocity is negative and constant, so the slope is constant and downhill. In this example, the constant acceleration is negative, and this means that the plot of position versus time will be an upside down parabola. In this plot, we're given an initial velocity of plus 2 meters per second, while in this plot, the initial velocity is minus 2 meters per second. In the plot of position versus time, the general equation would be x equals x0 plus v0t plus 1 half at squared. We're given an initial value x sub 0 equal minus 5 meters and an initial velocity of plus 2 meters per second and a constant acceleration of minus 6 meters per second squared. In this plot, the initial velocity is plus 2 meters per second. This means that at t equals 0, the slope of the x versus t graph has a positive slope, while in the graph on the right, the initial velocity is minus 2 meters per second, and this means that the initial slope at t equals 0 is negative. The equation for the motion is minus 5 minus 2t minus 3t squared. The slopes and intercepts have physical meaning. The y-intercept represents the initial location, x sub 0. At each point in the xt plot, the slope represents the velocity at that moment. The slope at t equals 0 represents the initial velocity. In the vt plot, the slope represents the acceleration. In the next example, a car travels in the negative x direction and then reverses direction. Here is the x-axis, and here is x equals zero. Initially, the car is in the negative x region, and its velocity is heading in the negative x direction. We are given a negative initial location, a negative initial velocity, and a positive acceleration. On the acceleration versus time plot, the acceleration is constant and positive. In the velocity versus time plot, the initial velocity is negative, but that shrinks to zero for a moment, and then the velocity points in the positive x direction. The acceleration and the slope are both positive and uphill. The equation for this line would be v equals v0 plus at, where v0 is negative. In the position versus time plot, the parabola curves upward since the acceleration is greater than zero. We shift the parabola vertically so that the initial location is negative, and we shift the parabola left and right so that the initial slope is also negative. In the next example, you stand at the edge of the roof of your house and throw a rock straight downward. Here is your house. We'll choose to put the y-axis with positive y upward and negative y downward. The initial y position, y sub zero, is at the height of the house and positive. The initial velocity, v sub zero, points in the negative y direction, so v sub zero is negative. The acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. It is negative because it points in the negative y direction. The acceleration is minus 9.8 meters per second. No matter if you throw the rock upward or downward or if you just drop the rock. The acceleration does not care about the initial velocity v0 or the initial location y0. Here are the plots. In the acceleration versus time plot, the acceleration is constant and negative. In the velocity versus time plot, the initial velocity is negative. The acceleration and slope are both negative. In the position versus time plot, the parabola curves downward since the acceleration is negative. 
The initial location, Y sub 0, at the top of the roof is positive. The initial slope or velocity, V sub 0, is negative. If the rock had been thrown upward rather than downward, then the initial velocity would be positive. Shrink to zero when the rock reached its highest elevation, and then the velocity would become increasingly negative as it fell back toward the ground. The acceleration would still be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. In the plot of height versus time, the initial location y sub zero would still be positive, but the initial slope would be positive because v sub zero is positive. Notice that the acceleration is constant at minus 9.8 meters per second squared throughout the motion. Even at the peak of the motion, when the object is at its highest point and the velocity is momentarily zero, the acceleration is still minus 9.8 meters per second squared. It's not the case that both the velocity and the acceleration are zero during the moment that the rock reaches the peak of its height. If the acceleration were zero then, it means the velocity would never change. This would mean that the rock would hover in midair at the top of its peak, never falling back down. Constant velocity represents how quickly your position is changing. We have V equals delta x delta t. For example, a velocity of 10 meters per second means that with each passing second, you've traveled 10 meters. But a velocity of 100 meters per second means that with each passing second, you've traveled 100 meters. Acceleration represents how quickly your velocity is changing. We have A equals delta V delta T. Or how quickly you get fast because V equals V zero plus A T. A higher acceleration means that you reach a higher velocity in less time. Constant acceleration means that velocity changes by a set amount with each passing second. For g equal 9.8 meters per second squared, velocity increases by 9.8 meters per second with each passing second. Between the 35th and 36th seconds, velocity increases by 9.8 meters per second. Motion with constant velocity means that position changes by a constant amount with each passing second. For a velocity of 10 meters per second, Position changes by 10 meters with each passing second. Between the 35th and 36th seconds, position changes by 10 meters. When your velocity is zero, then your position is not changing, even if the position is non-zero. We have V equals delta X delta T. When your acceleration is zero, then your velocity is not changing even if the velocity is not zero. We have A equals delta V delta T. Driving at constant speed means that your acceleration is zero, even though your velocity is not zero. While waiting at a stoplight, your velocity and your acceleration are both zero. When the light turns green, you press the gas pedal, making your acceleration non-zero even though your velocity is still zero. Our sole goal in this chapter is to understand the physical meaning of position x, velocity v, and acceleration a. These are three different aspects of motion. This box is sliding down this hill that is inclined at an angle theta. Acceleration down an inclined plane has constant acceleration a equals g sine theta. Let's compare accelerations of high and low angles. The block will slide down the incline with constant acceleration and its velocity will increase linearly in time as v equals v zero plus a t. Acceleration is greater on a steeper incline. 
Objects on a more steeply sloped incline have higher acceleration. Objects on less steeply sloped incline have lower acceleration. To help us distinguish velocity and acceleration, consider the motion of a block sliding down an inclined plane that is increasingly steep. In this case, both the velocity and the acceleration of the block will continually increase. Next, suppose that the incline is decreasingly steep. In this case, the acceleration is continually decreasing, but velocity is continually increasing. Velocity and acceleration are different things, and they are independent of each other. Neither cares about the other. We sense acceleration as that feeling in our stomachs when the elevator starts or stops, or as the car tops a hill, or in moving carnival rides. We do not sense velocity even as we ride in a car on a highway. We are not aware of the motion of the Earth, which spins at 1,600 kilometers per hour and orbits the Sun at 30,000 meters per second. If you drop a rock, what sort of motion results? We can tell that the falling rock speeds up, but how does its acceleration change? We've all seen this every day, but never had any reason to get out rulers and stopwatches to measure this motion. Around the year 1600, Galileo did, and he discovered acceleration, and that the dropped object falls with the constant acceleration of g equal 9.8 meters per second squared. Before this, nobody knew that nature makes use of acceleration. Before Galileo, people might speak of fast or slow, stopped or moving, but nobody ever thought of a change in speed. Some 40 years later, Isaac Newton discovered that force causes acceleration. Isaac Newton will be the hero of our next chapter. Would you expect that objects fall with constant acceleration, or would you expect their acceleration to change as they fail? We find out by making repeatable measurements of nature, and nature always surprises us. An object has been dropped from rest. These are the measurements of its position and speed through the first four seconds of its fall. This column is the time. At t equals zero, the speed is zero meters per second. One second later, the speed is 9.8 meters per second, and then 19.6, 29.4, and 39.2 meters per second. We see that the speed is changed by 9.8 meters per second between each successive second. The speed is changing linearly in time. We have v equals v0 plus gt, since the acceleration is equal to g. This column has the total distance fallen. This distance is changing quadratically in time. So when dropped from rest at the origin, the distance fallen is given by y equals one-half gt squared. The change in speed from second to second is constant, but the change in distance is growing quadratically in time. In slow motion, this object is thrown straight upward. It slows as it rises, hovers for an instant at the peak of the motion, and then speeds up as it falls back downward. This is a plot of the height of the object through time t. The object has the greatest upward speed at the moment that it is thrown upward. It rises by the greatest amount during the first time interval, less during the second time interval, and even less during the third time interval. The velocity is shrinking as the object rises. We'll let the length of this arrow represent the magnitude of the velocity.
When the object gets to the peak of its motion, its velocity shrinks to zero for just a moment, and then the velocity increases through time as it falls back downward. On the way up, the velocity was positive as it pointed in the positive y direction. In this plot of velocity versus time, the upward velocity was decreasingly positive. On the way down, the velocity is negative because it points in the negative y direction. The downward velocity is becoming increasingly negative. From the moment the object was initially thrown upward, its velocity decreased by 9.8 meters per second with each passing second. But the acceleration never changed. It remained minus 9.8 meters per second squared throughout the motion, even at the peak when the object's velocity was momentarily zero. Here are some symmetries in the motion of an object that is thrown straight upward, rises to a momentary stop, and then falls back to its launch height. The time taken to rise equals the time taken to fall. At each height along the upward-downward path, velocities are equal but opposite in magnitude. For example, at this height, if the velocity was plus 3 meters per second while traveling upward, then the velocity will be minus 3 meters per second while traveling downward at this same height. The upward launch velocity that is needed to rise through distance y from the bottom is the same as the velocity that occurs after falling through distance y when dropped from the top. For example, if you're asked, what is the launch velocity needed to throw an object 8 meters into the air? It's equivalent to asking what will be the velocity of the object after drop from rest and falling through 8 meters. Here's a plot of velocity versus time through 7 seconds. During the first second, the object has a velocity v0. And during that second, the object will travel a distance x equals v0 delta t, where delta t is one second. This product is the same as the area of this little rectangle, whose height is v0 and width is delta t. During the second second, the object has velocity v1 and travels a distance v1 times delta t, which is also the area of this rectangle. Adding up the area of all the little rectangles gives the total distance traveled and the area under the curve. This can be written as a sum or as the calculus integral. For any function, the area under the curve can be found by adding up the areas of a bunch of little rectangles and trapezoids. It's surprising that this process works but it's the fundamental procedure of today's science and engineering. If you start at the origin and travel seven meters to the right in seven seconds, stop, and then travel four meters to the left in two seconds, you'll only be three meters from the starting place but you will have traveled a total of 11 meters in nine seconds. The total distance traveled is 11 meters. The total elapsed time is nine seconds. And the average velocity is calculated to be the total distance traveled divided by the total elapsed time. Such an average velocity is rarely of any practical use, but that is its definition. The goal of this chapter is to better understand the meaning of time, 
position, velocity, and acceleration. We also gain practice in imagining duration, lengths, velocities, and accelerations. In this chapter, we begin to refine our notion of motion. We have observed motion all of our lives, but our two vague senses have caused us to carry some misconceptions about motion that are difficult to overcome within a week-long chapter. Future topics involving light and electricity and such are easier to understand because we do not have any preconceived and incorrect notions of those things. The motion of predators and prey is of biological importance, so evolution has equipped us to perceive it. It is also surprising that our brains cancel out the rise and fall of the world that occurs as you walk. If you stand in place, raise upward on your toes, relax, and then repeat this rise and fall, you'll plainly see that the world rises and falls. While walking, you are also rising and falling by a few centimeters, but your brain is canceling out this ignorable motion, leaving the world more steady. Does the brain of a chicken do the same thing? You might like to look online for kinetic art, which combines motion and art.